So it's a strange day to be gathering, but in a sense, it is a microcosm of what Friedman is about. And in the course of, of today online, these next few hours, Friedman brings people together, different backgrounds, different ages, different religious expressions, um, different ways of being in the world. But with the presumption that somehow or other together, we can learn, we can celebrate, we can share, we can see old friends, we can make new ones. And somehow or other come out of it nourished and connected to go back into the world to do what is needed. And so I wanna uh, welcome you. And we're gonna spend the central session at noon um, with Rabbi Isaiah Rothstein and Rabbi Jill Jacobs, particularly talking about what's happening in the world and Black Lives Matter. But we want today's celebration of Friedman neither to ignore that nor to be solely about that. Um, and we have many different people here and many different ways of connecting. And so to each one of you, participants, teachers, singers, uh, Chazon staff, um, people who've spent a lot of time at Friedman and people who never have been there, I, I simply thank you very, very much. And I look forward to seeing you again later in the day. And with that, I hand over to our great MC, Reb Ellie. Ellie, you're up. Thank you, Nigel. A uh, quick technical announcement. We'll put a link in the chat for our help desk where you can get tech help and schedule details for much of the day. Now over to the person who has been a friend of Isabella Friedman for many years and who I'd like to specifically thank for his work on Sukkafest every year, Rebezra Weinberg. In a moment, um, we're going to be doing the Shehrianu prayer. I've been blessed to lead this prayer uh, for many years. Um, and what are we saying Shehrianu for? It's the moment that sustained us, uh, highlighting that we're still here. We're still here. We're still grateful. Um, and so... This is the first virtual retreat, so I'm going to say Shekhyanu for that. Um, but I invite you in the chat <coughs> to add what you might be, um, what might you be saying a Shekhyanu for today? So please uh, add that um, as, as we're blessing. Uh, just before <coughs> I say it, um, I'm a Sukkafest alum, I'm a New York Ride alum, food conference alum, also an Elat Chaim alum. And... Uh, I was lucky enough to take the davening leader training course with Rabbi uh, uh, Sean Zevitt and Marsha Prager and Jack, who we're going to be on soon. And uh, one of the treasures I learned from them was Nusach, uh, the musical mode of prayer. And four times a year, we get to say the special Shehechianu, which I'm really, which has been such a thrill for me to lead um, all these years. And um, I remember the first time I led it, a, a, an elderly gentleman that couldn't stand, I uh, was in the sukkah and came up to me and said, that's the Shekhiano from my childhood. And I was like, ah. Oh. So sometimes we're leading new stuff, sometimes we're leading old stuff. So I'm gonna actually stand for this with a Kiddush cup, an empty Kiddush cup, um, because it's not the time to say Shekhiano over Kiddush, um, but I'm gonna stand. And you're invited to, to rise if you feel able. In the mood of Kiddush. The blessings for the new earth full of abundance and bliss for the presence of dear friends. I am overcome with joy to see all of your beautiful faces. Baruch Adonai, Melech Shekhe yanu vekimanu vekiyazmana 
Thank you, Rabbi Ezra. Now over to Marsha Prager, Rabbi Marsha Prager and Hazan Jack Kessler, two of the greatest Isabella Friedman teachers whose hundreds of students are located across the four corners of the earth. We are here with greetings from our holy DLTI, our holy Davening Leadership Training Institute, Hevra, and my colleagues Rabbi Sean Zevet and Daniel Sheff and Hazan Diana Brewer. Together, we are celebrating 20 years of training Jewish prayer leaders from all over the world and throughout the denominational spectrum of Jewish life to make Jewish prayer come alive. A decade of those years has been spent at our beloved Isabella Friedman, a place that lives in all of our hearts and for whose future we ardently pray. We share with you right now our DLTI theme song, Psalm 100. Eve do et Hashem v'simcha, bo lifanav dir nana. Usually translated, come serve the Holy One with joy. For as the Holy Rebbe Reb Nachman would often teach. The Holy Rebbe Reb Nachman used to say, my friends, do not despair. For hard times have come upon us. Joy must fill the air. The word that he used Usually translated, joy is a word you know well. Simcha. Simcha must fill the air. And yet the Holy Rebbe Reb Nachman also taught mitzvah gedola liot v'simcha tamid, that the greatest of all of the spiritual practices is to be continually in a state of simcha. So as we teach at the LTI, if simcha simply means being happy, then that mitzvah is impossible to fulfill, nor is it an honest expression of the spectrum of emotions that we must feel in our lives. So simcha must mean something deeper, something bigger. If you were to say to yourself, the greatest of all of the mitzvot is to be continually, hmm, what would it be? The best response that has arisen for me, and Jill Hammer is saying, present, to be present. 
Mitzvah gedola liyot v'simcha tani, the greatest of all of the spiritual practices, is to be alive now, to be fully, completely, 100% present, which means being present not only to joy, but to pain, not only to ecstasy, but even nebuch, to agony. Now we must bring the full spectrum of our capabilities to every moment that we are alive. And so we sing together. Idu et Hashem v'simcha Idu et Hashem v'simcha Lo levana v'irnana Levana v'irnana Be really alive! so much, Rabbi Marsha and Chazan Jack. Our next performer is Anat Hochberg. Anat is a fellow of the Rising Song Institute Fellowship and a teacher at the Let My People Sing Retreat. Anat, you're up. Hi, everyone. Good morning. So good to see everyone's faces. See if you can hear me. Awesome. So I think one of the most special things about being at Friedman that Friedman fosters is really a sense of oneness. Um, with the community that's fostered there over the course of a retreat and with all the beings in the, in the land there. So I just wanted to lead us in singing a really humble, simple prayer. Um, may we all be happy. May we all be safe. May we all be free, all of us as one. And after we sing it a few times in the melody, it's a zipper song. So we can put, instead of we all, we can put um, other people or places or beings in the song. So if you have something you want to put in the song, um, feel free to add it in the chat. May we all be happy. May we all be safe. May we all be free. All of us as one. May we all be happy. May we all be safe. May we all be free. All of us as one. Sing it with me. May we all be happy. May we all be safe. May we all be free. All of us as one. May we all be happy. May we all be safe. May we all be free. All of us as one. Who would you like to be safe, happy, free? May we all be happy. May we all be safe. May we all be free, all of us as one. And may the folks be happy, and may the forest be free, and may the trees be safe, oh, all of us as one. And may the plants be happy, and may the gale be safe. May we all be free, all of us as one. And may we all be happy. May we all be safe. May we all be free, all of us as one. And may 
be free to be happy and our community safe. And may we all be free of us as one. Thank you, Anat. I'm remembering sitting around the Isabella Friedman fire pit with you singing. It feels uh, really good to sing again at this moment. Next up, the co-founder and former director of the Adama Farming Fellowship, a man who is as much a composting master as he is a great leader, Shamu Sada. Thanks, Ellie. Can you hear me? Can we just give me a little wave? Great. Well, I am feel so blessed to still be here physically and be able to be at Isabella Friedman on the farm. And we miss you all. And this place misses you all. And it's not the same uh, without you. It's ghostly quiet. It's very beautiful, beautiful spring and thankful for that. But we miss, yeah, we miss the gatherings. We miss having people there. I miss actually singing and praying with people. And I hope uh, a little bit later, on the schedule, we'll bring you out to the farm and try to show you a little bit and talk about what's going on with Adama on the farm. But right now, I just wanted to offer something that makes sense for me in these confusing and upsetting times. Um, for someone like myself, who's white and has privilege, I don't fear for my life on a daily basis. Um, and it's tremendously confusing and upsetting what's going on in the world. And it's confusing for me to figure out what exactly I should be doing and what priorities are. Um, and in those moments, it's helpful for me to return to some wisdom from the Torah. So Harini Mikabel, I accept upon myself the commandment of the creator to love my neighbor as myself. And please join along. <laughs> Thank you, Shamu. Up next is Rabbi Mati Brown, who has been a shaper of prayer experiences at Isabella Friedman at so many retreats. Thank you. Uh, we wrote with our daughters a little while ago, Hazorim um, Bedima, those who sow with tears with glad song will reap. You know, it's a, it's a hard time, but it's the time to invest, you know, when times are down and it's going to be better. <laughs> but I am grieving, definitely grieving not being with you. Pesach, Sukkot And it's so wonderful seeing all of you beautiful people.
Thank you so much. This opening celebration has been really fun and incredible. And I'm excited to introduce our uh, next presenter. Uh, this is uh, a person who is the former director of the Jaffe Fellowship and responsible for helping an entire movement of young Jewish leaders to find their voices, including myself. Uh, I'm proud to call on Yoshi Silverstein. Thank you, Ellie. <clears throat> so uh, wonderful to, to be on here and to see you. and. Uh, Liana and maybe some other Jess and some other Jaffe fellows and of course everyone else from the, the Zone and Friedman community and the Jaffe world. Um, one, uh, so so the, some of the ethics and frameworks that we use in the Jaffe space um, are the four ethics for sustainability that we draw on from Jewish tradition and those ethics are self-care, people care, earth care, and resource share. Uh, and so in all times and in certainly times like we find ourselves in right now that are particularly challenging, times that are compounded by any number of different uh, variables and factors that are, um, that are causing us to have both pain um, but also growth and learning, we turn to these, to these ethics for guidance. So I, I think and hope that everyone on this call knows already about the importance of earth care um, the ways in which we care for the ecology of the earth, for the natural world around us, uh, and, and the importance of that and what happens when we, do, when we don't care for that. And so we definitely are holding that um, in, our, in our hearts and in our actions right now. But I want to focus more on the other three in this moment. Uh, first, so, so next on people care. Um, this is a moment in which uh, we are seeing the necessity in so many ways for people care uh, with the global pandemic that is uh, that we are all under the ways in which uh, we have been caring for those in our communities whether uh, you know within our immediate circles or those a little bit far away even if virtually I know we've all been thinking about how we can care for others and then in particular those who are um, black and brown folks and especially black folks right now um, are uh, particularly uh, feeling feeling the weight of systemic racism, systemic oppression, of police brutality. Uh, and so it is incumbent upon us to hold those folks uh, in our words and our hearts and in our actions and how we can care for them uh, in all the ways in which they are part of our community. The next is resource share. Um, similarly, we all have resources that we can give. We know that there is a deep, deep well in Jewish tradition of how we are instructed to share resources, the ways in which we think about ownership of the land, of time, of our community is one that is absolutely focused on collective ownership. And so again, I hope this is a time when folks have already uh, been thinking about what are some of the ways that you can redirect resources that you have, whether those are financial or time or emotional or any number of those things. Again, particularly in this time um, towards the, the folks in the Black community at large and the Black Jewish community who are most heavily impacted by systemic racism and police brutality. If you aren't sure where you can uh, find outlets to channel those resources, I encourage you first to consult Rav Google. Uh, and after you've consulted Rav Google and your Facebook feeds um, and other social media, um, because there are no shortage of resources that are being shared right now to then reach out to others in your community, uh, myself included, who can help direct you to those resources. 
The final one, and this is where we're going to spend a little bit more time right now as we move into this virtual, uh, the remainder of this virtual gathering, Nigel in his opening talked about Shabbat uh, as being core and critical to, to this moment, enable, enabling us to take proper rest and nourishment and care for our bodies. And so as much as the needs of the world demand ourselves and our bodies and our actions, we also have to take care of ourselves. And if we are not taking care of ourselves, there's no way that we can be in this for the long haul, which is what this moment demands. Not that we respond only for the next days or weeks or months, but this is unfortunately not something that's gonna change overnight. And we need to be focusing as much on ourselves to give us the ability to stay in this work. And so uh, within that, I want to encourage everyone to stand up. And I think we all know that when we find ourselves in, uh, in moments or context of discomfort or moments where courage and bravery are required, that we need to have a spine, right? And both metaphorically, of course, and literally, um, it all comes down to the spine and our abilities to, to move right, um, all come down to the spine. And of course, anyone who has had any sort of, um, you know, anything that is compromised in your spine knows very well uh, what, what happens when you, when you lose mobility in, in your spine. And so um, for everyone, to the best of your ability right now, I'm gonna take a few minutes to, uh, to, sp to spend some time working on the resiliency of our spine. Resiliency is this combination at the intersection of strength and flexibility. Right, so we need both of those things um, because if it's if we're if we focus too much on strength without flexibility, then at some point that will break, right? But if we focus too much on flexibility without strength, then we just bend at the slightest thing without the strength to hold to our resolve. So we're focusing on both of those things right now. So if you're in a comfortable position, and again, if standing is not comfortable, you can also do this seated. If you're sitting down, I encourage you to try to um, get your feet on a stable grounded position towards to the floor so that you can remain grounded. And if you're standing, same thing, a relaxed uh, neutral position. So we're going to focus now, uh, we're going to focus on this frontal plane going forward and backwards. I'll show you this way and I'll turn to the side. And we're just going to move through the spine, forwards and back, forwards and back. And try as you're moving through this to move through the entire spine. So right now I'm in this extended position here into this flexed position here. And I'm trying to move evenly, not only moving in my neck, for example, and not only moving in my lumbar, but again, the whole spine. So I'm gonna take another 30 seconds or so. And as you're doing this, just observe what the range is that you feel comfortable moving in your spine. Notice what that range is. Notice if there are any particular areas of the spine that feel tight. And certainly if anything feels painful, then try to move in a way that is not painful. Discomfort is good, pain is not good. It's important to be able to distinguish the difference. Okay, next we're going to now move across this plane from side to side. So I'm gonna go towards my right. Um, I'm not sure if that looks like it's to the right on your screen or to your left. So it's up to you if you wanna mirror me whichever way that is, sometimes it's easier to follow. So this, again, we're trying to move as much as we can through the entire spine and just moving from, starting off from moving from, uh, you know, standing position now to the, that I'm trying to get long through the spine. It's easier said than done. If you find yourself going like this in the neck, to trick yourself into thinking you're going further than you are, then try to keep your neck in, in alignment with the rest of your spine and not going ahead of itself. So spend another 20 seconds or so continuing to move this direction. And try to stay long through the spine.
and and now to the opposite direction for me that's to my left same thing going from center bending towards the left again trying to stay aligned and even through the spine Finally, in this way, we'll now move all the way from left to right, like a bamboo, maybe your favorite tree swaying in the wind. Feel the strength in your core, but also the flexibility to move as the wind and the moment call you. And finally, for this, the final minute or so of this movement time, now you're free to move in any direction, front, back, side, around, right? Connect all of these different pieces. And now just explore what is your spine capable of. And here, you can also, you can feel free to explore sort of leading with the head, leading with the neck, leading with the hips. Whatever you're feeling compelled to do, to try, go ahead. This is your time to improvise, to explore. Again, to think calling in the natural world, which is particularly good at being resilient. Maybe you're feeling a little bit of crackling in the bones. It's usually a good thing. Take another 20 seconds. And now go ahead and move yourself back feel free to remain standing but you can also remove yourself move yourself back into a seated position or whatever's comfortable for you so again i hope that felt good and nourishing i encourage all of us in movement practice or just in our in our daily practice of life um, to make sure that we don't forget the spine uh, as the both literally in our bodies, um, but also to hold the metaphor of how do we need to have a, both a strong and flexible, a resilient spine in the work that we do. As I finish, um, I want to just give kavod to elevate some of the teachers who I've been really particularly looking towards right now, some of whom I have deeper relationships with and some I mostly only know on social media. Um, but these are some Black and Jewish teachers who I've been really turning to for wisdom and guidance right now. Um, not an all-inclusive list, but some of the folks that I'm really thinking about right now. So those folks include Yavila McCoy, Shahana McKinney-Balden, Tonda Case, Melissa Carter, Jared Jackson, Manish Tana, also known as Shay Srishon, Rabbi Sandra Lawson, Kohenet Shoshana Brown, Rachel Faulkner, and many, many more who uh, I am not remembering in my moment, in this moment. I'm happy to also, yes, put those names in the chat. And so as a parting thought, um, something I've been really holding on to uh, lately is, is something that in often, oftentimes feels quite cliche to me, but in this moment feels like it couldn't be more true. Um, and that is this phrase from Pirkei Avot, Lo Alecha Ham Lecha Ligmor, Velo Ata Ben Hurin Lehiva Tel Mimenna. It is not upon us to finish the work, but neither are we, um, it's not obligated to finish the work, but neither are we free to desist from it. Uh, I'm moving forward in this work with the humility of knowing that nothing I do will be enough because nothing any of us do will ever be enough until we reach the time of the Moshiach of Messiah, however you understand that time to be. Um, but that doesn't mean that we can stop. 
Um, that means that we all have to push forward, find the ways that we can uh, take part in this work, find the ways that we can be grounded in ourselves and in our traditions um, and in our teachers and mentors and draw from that deep well to continue and to sustain ourselves and our communities as we work towards a better world. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Yoshi. Um, we're gonna go back to uh, Shamu for one last uh, activity before my final announcements. Shamu. Thank you, Yoshi. So I understand what Yoshi's asking us to do is to fill ourselves up so that we can go and do the particularly difficult work that needs to be done in the world. So I wanna imagine a, a cup, a kos, uh, a vessel in front of us. And I'm gonna ask folks to fill it up with particularly memorable moments. Just give us your snapshots, your little memories of times at Isabella Friedman in the chat. And I'll read some of those out so we can do what we do well as Jews, which is remember and orient ourselves towards gratitude as our cup fills up. What are your powerful moments? What are the moments that the experiences that you had at Isabella Friedman in prayer, in community, in nature that you wanna remember in this strange and difficult moment? And I'll just read a few of them out. Big Havdalas at Isabella Friedman, the view from the overlook, Torah yoga, feeling at home in my multi-faith self. Havdala, sitting on couches in the, uh, in the great hall in front of the fire. All night study at Shavuot, watching the mist rise off the lake in the morning. The goats, water libation on Sukkot. Singing and dancing with everyone at Sukkah Fest, shacharit by the campfire. The mikvah during Nehirim women's retreats, Rosh Hashanah celebration, Ariel's night walk, Avodah Talev with Adama, Camp Teva night hike on the overlook, silent meditation when the land is deep in snow sharing food together at the food conference. More on the, <laughs> more on the food. Shavuot with Ed Zalman, may his memory be a blessing. Lessons from Teva. Kol Zimra training with Shefa Gold, paddling on the lake, the first fruits parade. The blessing of this first experience with Chazon and feeling completely at home. Goat cheese. The big Rebbe, my wedding, the LTI, davening with Reb Zalman in the darkness, granola with yogurt in the morning, Bat Shemus's drumming in the yurt. Eating greens straight from the field, hearing the rain on my tent. Eve Elson's dream work exercises. Pickling, baby goats, the hammocks, children's programs. Falling in love with the divine again and again. Weeding the chai tunnel, which is our greenhouse to the sound of pouring rain. Warm maple syrup. Camp Teva. The smell of a particular goat. <laughs> Bringing the elders to the fields in the golf cart for farm chores. The Motsi Shabbat talent show. Simchat Torah when the whole floor vibrates. Rice cakes with peanut butter and jelly. The way the land smells after the rain. Jewish baseball retreat. Mikvah in the lake. How beautiful the land is at Isabella Friedman. Sunset light on the hills. 
the smile on Mark Russo's face, being present when my daughter's friend got engaged at the Chazon biking weekend, helping the seniors at Pesach, feeling and chanting all streams, one source, the floating sukkah, the Jewish community conferences, the feeling of being truly at home, Tashlich with my family, how my first time at Isabella Friedman felt like I was coming home. Joyous Simchas, all streams, one source. Thank you. May our cups continue to overflow, overflow, and let the memories feed us in a sense of gratitude and oneness of communion feed us so we can go out to do what we need to do. Thank you so much, Shamu, and thank you to everyone, all these beautiful memories of the place that we've all called home. It's really touching at this time. Um, so just uh, to go from the memories to a little bit of Tachlis, we have a packed day, so please check your schedule for the Zoom links to the next class that you'll be attending. Uh, please check the chat for a link to the schedule, which was also emailed out to everyone. Uh, we've made it in a form that's pretty easy to remember. It's bit.ly slash if schedule, in case you forget. Thank you all for coming out to support and celebrate Isabella Friedman. And uh, please make sure to join us for uh, the After the Plague session at 12 o'clock when Nigel will be chatting with Rabbi Isaiah Rothstein and Rabbi Jill Jacobs about Jewish communal reactions to current events. Thank you so much. See you at your next session.